Hey guys, today we're going to talk about patterns, and I think this will be a little bit better for you now that you know some tricks on your calculator. Um, so number one, we have some pictures with some blocks. Whenever you have pictures like this, the first thing I want you to do is label each of your pictures, one, two, three. And then we can throw this information in a table. Your term numbers in your table will always be the same when you are creating your own table. We have term number one, two, and three. Now on the right side, your term, you're going to tell me what's actually happening at that number. So at number one, what's actually happening is that I have eight blocks. On number two, I have 10 blocks. On number three, I have 12 blocks. Now that we have a table, you can put this in your calculator in the stat edit function in your L1 and your L2, your lists. So go ahead and do that. Pause the video if you need to. Once we do that, we find our function rules, y equals 2x plus 6. A says, how many blocks will the term number 8 have? My term number is referring back to this left side of the table, which the left side of my table is my x's. So this is telling me x equals 8. So I'm going to take that and plug it into my function rule. So I have y equals 2, and instead of x, I'm plugging in an 8 plus 6. On the right side of my equation, 2 times 8 plus 6, that's all numbers. I can throw that in my calculator if I would like. And when I do that, I get out 22. So term number 8 will have 22 blocks. Now if you would like, you could also continue your table on. That's also another good option. B says, what will the term number be when there are 52 blocks? So now I don't know what the term number is. And again, this term number, referring to that left side of the table, which is the x's. I don't know what x is. But I do know I have 52 blocks, which is my right side of my table. So now I know that y equals 52. So I'm going to take this 52 and plug it into my equation wherever I see a y. So now I have 52 equals 2x plus 6. To find out what x is, I need to solve for x. I need to get it alone. The first thing I need to do is subtract 6 on both sides. 52 minus 6 gives me 46 equal to 2x. So I have 46 equals 2x. And then I must divide by 2. So x equals 23. All right, next up. Now I have a sequence. This isn't the exact same as the pictures before, but it's the same idea. I just want you to label them as one, two, three, four. That's my first number, second number, third number, fourth number. And we can throw that in our table. Our term numbers are always consistent. We have term number one, two, three, four. The actual term in that spot is the information that we get from the problem. So in the number one spot, I have an 18. Then I have 23.5, 29, and then 34.5. Now, since I have a table like this with multiple points, I can put this in my stat edit in my L1 and L2 to get my function rule. Then I get this nice, pretty rule, y equals 5.5x, plus 12.5. Okay. If n represents a number's position in a sequence, write the first five terms described by each expression. We're just going to do number four here. So the first five terms, that's referring back to that table. We have our term number and the term. So they want to find term number one, two, three, four, five. So I'm just going to take this one and plug it in everywhere I see an n. So I have one, 
times 1 minus 1 1.5 plus 2. And I'm going to continue that same pattern. 2 times 2 minus 1.5 plus 2. 3 times 3 minus 1.5 plus 2. 4 times 4 minus 1.5 plus 2. And then 5 times 5 minus 1.5 plus 2. Go ahead and throw those in your calculator and see what you get. You should get these numbers. Now don't just take my word for it. Make sure you do it yourself because it's really important that you know how to enter this stuff correctly into your calculator. I know it seems easy, but it's really easy to make mistakes and think you have it when you in fact do not. Okay, last question. The train is moving at a constant rate of speed. The table below shows how far it travels in a given number of minutes. Use the information in the table to determine how many miles the train, the train will travel in 45 minutes and write the function rule. Let's find the function rule first since now we know this really nifty trick with L1 and L2. The problem with this table though is we're really used to seeing an up and down table with an X and a Y where your X's are always on the left. Well, when you have a table like this where the top row and a bottom row, your X's will always, always be on the top and your Y's on the bottom, which tells me this should be L1 and this shall be L2. So go ahead and enter this in stat edit and see what you get. Don't be lazy and wait for me to do it. Do it yourself as well. Make sure you know how to do these steps on your own. When you're entering, be careful not to enter this last one because you don't have information for both the L1 and L2 on that one. Once we do this, we find out that y equals 1.15x. Now, to find out the distance for 45 miles, I'm going to take this x and plug it in. So I have y equals 1.15 times 45, which gives me 51.75 miles. All right, it looks like that's all we've got. I hope that was helpful. It is time for you to complete your post-assessment.